Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Would you like a kitten? Have one delivered. Just log on to PetsOvernight.com and we'll send you a cute kitten overnight. PetsOvernight.com, delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. Shut up and sit down. Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode of Third Shift. It is episode 403, and of course, it's me, Mr. Eric, and today we've got a special guest with us. Do we? No, we don't. But we do, because it's Mr. Madsen, glorious bastard himself. He is indeed a special guest, a permanent guest here on the show. He's here today in some special circumstances to do this wonderful show for all the boys and girls out there. But before we talk about games, video games in specific, etc., we have to say, Matt, how was your week? What'd you do? What's going on? Now I got to say, I'm not here via special circumstances. You're here via special circumstances. It's not my fault. It's your fault. It's you did it. I just said, I just said we. It's called plural, man. You know, we all take, we all take the blame. <laughs> I guess that's true because anybody who says, well, why'd you go up so late? Well, technically it's my fault, but also technically it's your fault. So, it, you know, it is a we. It's a we us. Country boy internet is down for the entire Midwest, the entire country. There's no internet. So we're phone call recording it, and whenever the internet comes up, I'll get the file, we'll do the edit. This may be Friday, maybe Saturday, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, who knows. But you asked how I've been doing this week. I've played two games. I did absolutely nothing in real life. It was a boring week. It was a nothing week. It was a blah week. But the one thing that saved it is one of those games, which is Persona 3 Reload, because I did a very rare Friday night stream. I did a Saturday morning stream, big long streams. Just, God, the game is just so much fun. I love it. And it always makes me feel good. And that's why I did the Friday night stream. Because it was a crappy day. I was tired. I was exhausted. I was sleep deprived. I was angry. Because it was a rough week last week. And I went, I need something. I need something to cheer me up. No other game sounded good. And I went, Persona 3 is the only thing that sounds good in my whole life right now. So I'm going to jump on. I'm going to stream it. I did it. I did it the next day too. God, oh, the game's so much fun. I love it. The only other game that I've played this week. Is that right? Let me think. Let me use my brain. And think in my brain. I think that's right. The only other game I played this week was Resident Evil 4 Remake. Because we talked about it on the Shifter Monthly Topic. So if you're a patron at the Shifter Monthly Topic level, go check out the discussion about that in amongst other things. And I said, man, I remember all the good times I had in Resident Evil 4 regular for the GameCube. Let me bust into Resident Evil 4 Remake and see if I can have those times again. And I didn't have those times. I got to the village, that first village, Eric's talked about it, it's tough, it's brutal, it's weird, and I died three or four times, got through it on the last time, and I went, okay, but something's, something's off, something's weird, something's just, it feels gross, it feels grimy now, like the old Resident Evil, it was a survival horror game, there were gross elements to it, like, you know, people's heads exploded, your head could get chopped off by the chainsaw man. And I was just like, man, watching every death scene for Leon, it's like five to ten seconds of just like, man, zoom in, look at, oh, man, look at him die, look at him, oh, hear him scream, watch him die, oh, cool, wow. And Howard, actually, when I was talking to him about this today at work, he said, man, it's like gornography. I'm like, that's a perfect word for it. That's how I felt. So I played a little bit more, I got past the next couple encounters, and the actual gameplay is still fun. Like, I still like the, the moving and the shooting and the way you do stuff. But I just felt it was so dark and so brown. And I remember colors in the previous game. And I was just not having fun with it. So I told myself, I'll get to the merchant. I'll see the merchant. Because I know he's different. I know he doesn't have the same voice actor. He doesn't say the same lines. But I'll get to him and see how I feel. I got to him. I was like, man, this isn't my merchant. Hashtag not my merchant. And I stopped. And I went, okay, this one's not for me. But then I thought, I thought right before recording this, I went, are you just rose-colored glasses in the original game. Is that what's happening? And I went, okay. YouTube. Resident Evil 4 Remake Death Compilations. And I watched them. I went, yeah, this is gross. And there's always just... Leon is always screaming for like 10 seconds and you hear... <laughs> like somebody dumped like a 50-gallon bucket of slime and glop on the floor. And I went, yuck. Gross. And then I went, okay, YouTube. Resident Evil 4 2005 Death Compilations. And it's not gross. It's not that gross. You still do get a couple, you know, specialty ones, but they last like 
one second, two seconds. And then Leon goes, Burr! and it goes, boom, you're dead, continue. And I went, this is why I was able to get through the other one. And then, you know, I'm not like squeamish. I'm not like gross. But you watch stuff like that. I'm like, I don't need to see that. I just need, oh, you died. Okay, boom. Like a lot of the villagers, they hit you with an axe in the original game. You just go, Burr! I'm dead. In the new game, you get like a five-second death animation of them chopping, 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 and squirting and squirting, and Leon going, ah! So it's not like that. But watching that, then seeing all the colors and the bright sun, I went, man, maybe I should just play that instead. Because I have Resident Evil 4 on every single game system in the entire world. Maybe I should just play that. But regardless, those are the two games I played, the two experiences I had in the two games I played this week. Eric, hey, my buddy... On the telephone. What? what? What did you play? What did you do? What's going on with you? Well, by gosh, golly, I took a trip to Midland and I played a queued up event. So I went to a town that uh, I've never visited before and had me a good old time walking around the block. They had a big, um, what do they call those little shindigs where all the vendors come out and like a little festival type thing, art festival, whatever you want to call it. A bunch of vendors, a bunch of little food trucks and all sorts of stuff happening. So not only did we get to play a queued up event, we got to walk around and just look at these uh, vendors' art, pieces of art and whatnot. It was really cool. Had one guy out there with his lathing tables and all the other woodworking equipment, and he was actually like right there doing some of his artwork whilst people were buying some of his other pieces. And, you know, I always enjoy that kind of like hands-on, right there in the moment. You can see what he's doing, how he's making it. So kind of cool. Had a good time with that. Other than that, in real life, not too much happened in this last week. Pretty calm, cool, collected, except for the family got another dog. Uh, so we're in the process of dealing with that whole rigmarole, and they're all super you know, excited about it, hoop de hoo and all that. So, yeah, real life, that's it. And the game front, I only played one game, but I did open up another one. And I'll talk about it in a minute. Stellar Blade, I'm getting to the end game here. I'm about at the point where they do the... Hey, if you do this part, you can't go back. So I'm trying to wrap up any side quests I have. Unfortunately, the only ones I have left are like these fishing ones. And they're starting to get kind of ridiculous. So I'm thinking I might abort it and just go ahead and finish the game. They did say that there's a special ending, though, if you complete a certain amount of the uh, quests, side quests for the game. And they said something about a bar or something. So maybe I haven't reached a point where they show you the bar that you need to complete to see the special ending. But I don't see that bar yet. But I can tell you this. I've done every single side quest in the game except some of the fishing ones, but not all of them. So hopefully that'll pop up soon. Because uh, I love the game, having a great time with it. But, you know, I'm done. I did it. We're about to go do some really cool boss fights, having a grand adventure. Find out some really cool weird stuff, a couple twists I'm sure. And then I'll finally be able to move on to another game. And then this is where this part comes in. I said, well, what am I going to go to? I already said I should go back to Infinite Wealth. So I logged logged that up, Matt, yesterday. I put it in. I loaded it up. It's clicked on my save. Yeah, there's my save. Let's get in here. And man, I mean, I don't know what the hell I'm doing or what's going on anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. I have no idea. I'm just like, oh, okay. I got into a fight. Went to an alleyway. Dude kept going, come here, come here, come here. Totally forgot. So I just went running at him. I didn't see or look at him for anything. I was in a fight for my life. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes fighting this dude, using potions, the whole nine heals. This dude's calling for backup every two seconds. Mm -hmm. I beat him, and I level up each character like three times instantly. So, I don't know. I just randomly fought some giant boss as my very first thing to do coming back into the game. And uh, leveled up a whole bunch, took forever. I didn't even know if I wanted to save it because I'm rusty. I don't know what my skills were doing. You know, I was not I was not playing that fight the way I would probably have played that fight. But then I went, ah, what do I, what do I care? I can, I can go buy some more freaking food. All I did was use, you know, some eggs and this and that to heal up. So what the hell with it? I, I saved it anyway. And then I look at my map and I'm like, well, what's the, what do I got to go to? And it shows you, uh, you know, your location where you got to go. I don't know why I got to go there, but that's where I got to go. And then I look, and there's two more text bubbles that I don't remember being there before. So there's apparently two more side quests that weren't done. So I'm like, well, let's go do that. So I go over to one of them, 
And oh, hey, each bind them for the and it starts talking, 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 talking. And it was like seven minutes. I'm listening to this. I just did this t- it was super delayed extended battle, 20 minutes with this guy who should have probably beat way faster. And I went, all right, I can't do this yet. I, I need to commit to this. I forgot. I forgot mm-hmm. that this game requires you to be in it because there's too many long cutscenes, too many people yapping their mouths. Fights can be super basic to super crazy, depending on if you're, you know, they got the king shapes over their heads, that kind of stuff. So I went, all right, well, this might, this should be the game I go back to, but man, I just spent a good 35, 40 minutes and I did not get my sea legs back in. All right. So that was the only other game I played, man. And that was just yesterday. I checked that out and went, holy crap. And to not to mention, and this means nothing because the game, I know Infinite Wealth is amazing and awesome, but. I'm coming off a of Stellar Blade where the, these graphics are insane, mm-hmm. like just phenomenal. And I get an infinite wealth, and I went, "Oh, whoa! Am I something wrong with my screen? Like I put it in another setting. It's gra- it was grainy, you know, and and not like 4K sharp. And I'm like, oh, got to adjust to this. I forgot. Not all games are like freaking this insanely detailed. But I'll get over that part." I just got to get back into that game, and uh, I will. I will. But uh, I'm also scared because I feel like I'm going to get back into it. It's going to be another 50 hours before I beat that game. So Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully not, though. <laughs> but it is awesome nonetheless, and it is what I did this week. With that, that's it. Now we're here. I mean, we're doing this weird show where I'm on a phone instead, and it's strange. Here's what we're going to do, I guess. Before you're ready to go back to Infinite Wealth, once you finish off Stellar Blade, what I'm going to need you to do is go check out the game that I'm going to talk about for the release this week, and then you go into Infinite Wealth, and your mind will be dazzled. Your eyes will be like, you'll be blinded by the light of how good that game looks, because it does look really good, especially for a a larger open-world JRPG type of game. Oh, yeah. I remember loving it. Oh, yeah. But between Stellar Blade and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, you need to go check out, and everyone should go check this out anyway, Scald Against the Black Priory, which dropped on the 30th of May, developed by High North Studios, published by Raw Fury. This dropped for PC on Steam and GOG only, and I knew nothing about this game. I'd heard nothing about it beforehand. I basically know almost nothing about it right now because I don't want to spoil it for myself. But the introduction I had to this game was I got an email from GOG, because if you don't know... If you have a GOG account, they send you discount codes like every two days. And they're usually like for a certain game or a certain collection of games. And, you know, I check them out and I go, oh, man, hmm, well, I have that on other consoles. Or, well, I'm not going to play that game, so I ignore it. But I opened up this one, and it was an exclusive discount for Scald Against the Black Priory. And I opened it up, and this was like maybe a day after Eric and I had had a discussion about LucasArts games where the text was different colors. And it was that old-school computer game look. And I opened up this email... And I saw old school computer game fonts in different colors. And I saw these little pixelated dice get thrown up into the air and rolled. And I went, what is this game? Whoa, this is a super old school computer, I guess, adventure game. I won't say point and click adventure game because that makes you think of a traditional point and click. But this is apparently in the vein of something like Ultima, which I've never played before in my life. I would say it's kind of D&D based. You roll up a character, you have a million stats, a million different classes, you have all kinds of different appearances you can do, and then you are part of, I think it's like a mercenary group on this boat, and the boat's under attack, and eventually it's going to sink because you're on your way to an island to do something. I don't know what. But you get attacked, the boat sinks, and then you get into this Lovecraftian cosmic horror type of struggle with whatever's going on on this island and it is so old school looking like it's before LucasArts games kind of old school looking like straight up 8-bit pixels you got to see it in action go watch a trailer go see some screenshots to know what I'm talking about but man there's something about it like I've never played these old school games like that old school but when I see this game in action I just fall in love your characters like moving around these these beautiful pixel art environments, and I mean beautiful in that low res way. And they are detailed, but they're not detailed. Y- if you see it, you're going to know what I'm talking about. You're opening chests, you're equipping items, you're going into combat, you're moving your units on a grid, you're getting companions, and your companions have different stat bonuses. So when in the story sections you're rolling your skill checks, they can roll skill checks for you. You can roll skill checks for them. All kinds of stuff like that. But man, I. I can't sell this more than just saying go watch it. Because if you see it, you will either love it or this won't be for you at all. 
But that graphical style, man, it's it's crazy. One of the things I love the most is you go into like the story segment, like I said, it'll show in the top half of the screen this beautiful like pixel art scene. And it's kind of like a still image. Like if you're talking to a guard in front of a gate, you get that traditional look. Boom. And then underneath the bottom half of the screen is all the story, the beautiful text. Like you walk up to the guard and he eyes you with a suspicious air. And then you have the choices of what to say to him. And boom, boom, boom. There's no voice acting. There's no nothing. It's traditional text adventure with this beautiful pixel art going with it. And then you have intense combat. You have stats to roll against. You have checks to make. Man, it sounds amazing. And speaking of sounds amazing, the music. The music and the sound effects are not that retro sound. The music is great. It's not beeps and boops. And there's nothing wrong with beeps and boops. I love beeps and boops. But it's like beautiful orchestral. It's not what you would expect from with the way it looks. So it's like you're going back to the past, but you're bringing this more detailed than it is art style, but still with that color palette of back in the days. And you're bringing the beautiful music and you're bringing these tiny touches. Like when you get a critical hit, it goes whoosh. There's like this little highlight around the text and it goes ping, but it's not super flashy. It's not like boom in your face, but it's just like, man, that looks popping against these really just old school, crunchy pixel graphics. Ooh. And then if you love Lovecraft stuff, that's this in spades. Eric loves it. I love it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I was amazed by just like the little like five second trailer that that GOG email showed me. Then I watched your reviews and I saw more of those story scenes and the way when you do a certain response and the art scene changes based on what's happening to you. Oh, this game looks incredible. It sounds really good. Now, it might be too old school for me in like the gameplay department. I don't know. But it looks great. Moving units, picking up items, using special attacks. getting You have like six character slots, so you can get five more companions plus your main character, building out characters in different ways. I think I have to get this. And it's pretty cheap, too. I think it's base, 15 bucks, maybe on sale on top of that for its release. If you want an old school dungeon crawling adventure game, like I said, with the beautiful art, with the beautiful music, pointing and clicking, but not like point and click, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Check out Scald Against the Black Priory. It looks popping. I love the way this looks and the way this sounds. It looks amazing. That does sound pretty damn good, Matt. I will take a peek once my internet comes back up. Mm-hmm. But of course, another game I ain't touching until the internet comes back up, Matt, is a game I am going to play because I've invested too much time into it. But it's a game I don't know when or how I'm going to play. Because it's Destiny 2, the final shape. And here's the problem. My PlayStation, Matt, is full. I got no room. And it's like, well, what's it take to get Destiny 2 back on here? Oh, 500 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So that's everything except for one one other game. I'd have to delete seven games to put Destiny back on here. That's not going to happen right now. And let me jump in real quick because I know the last, like, PlayStation Stars, whatever monthly combo of stuff you could do to get you know, more rewards and stuff. One of them was Play Destiny. And I went, oh, that's easy. It's free to play. I can get it right now. Oh, wait, that game takes up an entire hard drive. Mm-hmm. Never mind. I can't, I can't play it for five seconds just to get the free coins and the free whatevers because it's too much. It's too big. 350 points or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's too much. And that's, that's the problem, folks, because guess what? Destiny 2, Final Shapes here. This is it. This is the end of this particular story of the light and the dark fighting one another. It is not the end of Destiny. It's just the end of this arc, this storyline. So the witness has come. He's taken and screwed everybody over. Now you're going inside of that giant white ball, the Traveler, and you're going to fix what's going on, and you're going to stop the witness from eradicating all life everywhere because that's what the witness wants to do. Why? I don't know. But you know what? Does it matter? It doesn't. You got to get in there and stop them from doing it, which is what you're going to do. Everybody knows what Destiny is, so I don't really have to go and elaborate. If it's a first person shooter, it's been out for a hundred years. If you don't know, and it, of course, will change with your specials to third person. So, you know, don't say, well, it's not always first person. Yeah, I know that. Everybody knows that. It's not that complicated. And if you're in the tower, you're also third person. So there you go. But anyway, who's you're a guardian, you were resurrected by a little little floaty guy, and you gotta save the day. Are you good? Are you bad? Well, the story's been trying to give you kind of that information in that story this entire time. So you're gonna have to come up with your own solution as to if you're good or bad. I can't tell you. But right now, with the final shape out, I did want to get in there and do the campaign at least. 
Raiding, probably never going to happen. PvP, PvP has been gone for quite some time, except for just casually. And here it is, folks. The first glimpses. All right? Launch, not so great. It's been rough, apparently. Bungie's been issuing out apologies. I've been seeing them online. People complaining here and there. Well, not here and there. A bunch about it. But you get beyond the, I can't get ready for the raid. The, uh, the, the systems keep going down, blah, 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 blah. Apparently, the campaign is pretty damn good. And that made me smile because that's the part I care about. That's all I want to go do is get the campaign done, see how this all plays out and how the story ends. And you say, Eric, you won't be able to see how the story ends because, of course, we all know in Destiny the boss is in the raid and you can't get the final story until you beat the boss in the raid. Well, again, you know what I'm talking about. Play the campaign, go beat the boss on soft mode, get that ending, and then go watch a raider show me the ending from the raid and then if you also didn't know destiny did a thing where once the boss and the raid's been beat the storyline the cinematics will automatically cut in and play for players once you're in game so you don't have to beat it to see what the ending was it'll post up at a little thing and you go click on it and then you can watch it so there you go i don't have to do anything and i'll get to finally see the ending to this arc in the destiny world which i'm excited to do because i've been investing in this game for uh, what's it been, Matt? I don't know. Eight years? Nine years? A long time? It's been a long time. At least as long as the podcast has been around. Yeah, for sure. So just f- for a long time. So I got to know. You know, I got to see what, what happens with all my favorite characters. Because if you didn't know, also, they brought Cade back. Because you're going inside the Traveler, so you're kind of going to this weird, uh, I don't want to call it a dream world, but some kind of weird uh, transdimensional, dimensional weirdness. And Cade's there. And that's freaking crazy cool because Cade's one of the coolest characters ever. And, of course, they killed him off. Spoiler alert. They killed him off quite a ways ago in the past. But he's going to be back. And he gets to interact with the crow, who's the one who killed him in the first place. I got to see it. I got to know what happens. So very excited. And if you didn't know, now you know. If you want to go and play Destiny and you want to get a story from beginning to finish as well as much as you can because they got rid of a lot of old content. It's a whole thing. It's here. The big finale has come, and you get to experience it. I get to experience it. And I can't wait to do so as soon as I can get 200 gigs of uh, free space on my PlayStation 5. (laughs) And speaking of things that you got to go experience, you got to go experience the free epic game for this week because it was a mystery game, and I didn't talk it up. I didn't want to jinx it. I didn't want to pull an Eric and, you know, have it be Baby Dress Up Simulator 97 or whatever. But this week, it's one of my favorite games. It's Marvel's Midnight Suns. Mm -hmm. It had to have been on my Game of the Year discussion somewhere last year. I don't remember where it was, but I absolutely love that game. And if you don't like the story, fine. But the combat in the game is so good. Tactical, superhero-based combat. You're fusing cards, you're getting cards, you're upgrading cards, you're making your attacks better, you're synergizing with your other party members, you're making friends with them back at the base. God, God, what a great game! I just want to play it again, but I couldn't possibly... But you can possibly do it thanks to the Epic Game Store. Everybody should get it. Everybody should get it. Everybody should play it. At least try it. Because it's free. It's free on your PC. You can download it. You can play it. It's awesome. I love it. It's Marvel's Midnight Suns. Go get it. Yes. That's an insane free game. And yes, the spoiler did spoil me, Matt. I remember as soon as you said it, I went, yep, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And I was jumping for joy because I went, oh, by golly, a game I would love to try and play and have a great time with. But I don't have the money to be buying this game because there's too many other games. I don't have to now. Thank you, Epic. You allow me to just push the download button, go play, and you know what? If I never finish it, oh, well, I didn't spend a dime. doesn't matter. And if I do, even better. No, I get a free game that I got to enjoy and have a good time with. But that's not all, folks. You got Amazon Prime. Go drive on over there because there's another couple good ones in here. Right now, as of June 6th, you can get Star Wars Battlefront II Classic 2005 Edition. You can get that one. Cool. It's a great game. That's not what I'm talking about, though. Weird West Definitive Edition is another one that's free as of right now. And that is a really cool game. I think it's been free somewhere else, though, recently. Because I feel like we just talked about it somewhere else in the past few weeks. But either way, now you can get it at Amazon Prime for free as well. And that's a fantastic-looking game. One I was very much interested in, but once again, just had to pass up on. So go check that one out. And it's not even it. There's another one. And this is one we've talked about in the show in the past. I never finished it. I don't I can't remember if Matt did or not. It's Genesis Noir. Oh yeah. That's there. Free for you. Free. Just go grab it. Boop. Download. 
and then you get to have a really cool detective black and white weird game it's it's it was neat and i didn't finish didn't finish it because it was bad it was just i had to move on to a bunch of other stuff that you know were must plays for me so three really good games here and genesis noir is a must play and i i can't say the reasons but if you get towards the end things just go insane like you think you know how the game is and what it's about, but then it just goes way further than that. And it was it was phenomenal. It was great. It's free, so everybody should play it. Same with Weird West. Same with Battlefront 2, even. Same with Marvel's Midnight Suns. And if you have Game Pass, here's two more games that are essentially free for you. Because dropping on Game Pass this week were Firework, which is one of those Taiwanese horror-slash-puzzle games. Like, I know I've talked about one, like, ghost horror game. Maybe it's called Detention. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. I know I did that one as a release. Here's another one called Firework. I don't know the story of this one, but there's more puzzles. It's kind of, you know, a narrative horror puzzle adventure. If you're into that stuff, check that out. And then a totally different, totally cute-looking game. And maybe I saw this, like, right after I had done the Resident Evil, but we also have Rolling Hills, where you are a cute little robot running a sushi stand in the small town with all these cute little characters all around. And I was looking at it and seeing the bright popping colors, and I was just like, man, this just makes me smile. This makes me happy. Look at this little cute robot. Search for little cute sushis to all his little cute friends. Man, neat. I don't know. I don't know if it's deep or if it's not, but I hear it's kind of like Harvest Mooney because you can do side quests in the town. You can do all kinds of other stuff and do the sushi management stuff. I don't know. Check out two more free games if you're on the Game Pass, and check out everything else if you're not. Man, that's too much, man. It's too many free games. Mm -hmm. We always say it. What a world to be living in where you could just play video games for free for most of your life. Oh, yeah. And never have to worry about nothing. It's insanity. (sighs) Now, the next up here, man, is something that's not free. All right? But it is good news for me. PlayStation VR 2 is getting its PC adapter on August 7th. You ask what I'm talking about? It's exactly that. PSVR 2 has decided that they want to make sure that uh, everyone who bought that system can actually play all the games and everything that has any sort of value anywhere. So they're making this adapter for $59.99 that allows you to tap into your PC using your PSVR 2 headset, which means then you can go to Steam and buy the Steam games for VR and play those as well on your PSVR 2 headset. This is great. It's cool. It's it's good news because you now you get to play like Half Life Alex, which is a game everyone's begged for on the PlayStation VR two. Only real downside well, there's one technical and one other one. The technical one is PSVR two is made for PS five. So some of the haptics, some of the like eye movement stuff, that's not something you can use on the Steam VR games because it was never designed to do that. So just be aware that some of those games won't take advantage of some of the what the PSVR 2's headset can do. However, of course, just remember of course, all PSVR 2 games will always take advantage of those wonderful, wonderful perks that you get on that headset. So that's a technical disadvantage, but none that you shouldn't have already expected. The only other one that sucks is the fact that with this move, I feel it's very apparent that PlayStation's not going to be putting their time and energy into the PSVR 2 anymore. So it's going to be up to third party, and then, of course, whatever uh, MetaQuest pulls out of their rear ends and gets onto Steam, etc. Which, would they put anything on Steam? I don't know. Is the, are they, aren't they are they their own thing? I don't know. I mean, I know they have their own store, but I don't know if it's, like, exclusively MetaQuest store stuff, or if you can just... Yeah, because I, th- I, I think there are. I think they got, like, a Batman one coming that's exclusively MetaQuest, mm-hmm. and then they got that As- Asgard one. I think that's yep. exclusively MetaQuest, which means you wouldn't be able to get it on Steam. So it's a whole thing. There's still some freaking roadblocks here. But anywho, that's a kind of a tangent. Basically, it just I just feel like uh, PlayStation's kind of letting it, its claws into VR slip away. So while it's great news that I'll still be able to play any other games that come out on Steam and whatever third-party supports VR, I, I feel like uh, the VR is going to be backing off for a while once again. And that's a bummer because uh, I really want to go forward. I really want to keep rocking and rolling in this world. But alas, it is what it is. At least they're giving you an opportunity to jump on onto another bandwagon and keep rolling in case it doesn't keep rolling on the PlayStation exclusive side. And so Eric's got the goodsy badsies on the PlayStation VR 2, and I'm going to give you just some goodsies on the PlayStation VR 2. Because if you don't have it yet, and I don't know if this is permanent or if it's just like right now to offset the the news of this fifty nine ninety nine add-on piece... But uh, last time I checked, which was like a day ago, P- 
PSVR 2 is on sale for $50 off. So it's $450 instead of $500. And like I said, I don't know if that's sticking around. I don't know what. Or if it's just like, hey, it'll be this. But you can also get this adapter and we'll essentially get the same amount of money. But if you're holding off for a 10% discount on your PSVR 2, now's the time to get it because you have that right now. So sad news for Eric because he already has it. But good news possibly for you if your wife was like, man, you know, I won't let you spend more than $462. And oh, you go, damn, gosh, PSVR 2 is 500 I just can't do it. We're almost, we're almost there. I was so close. Now you're there. You can do it. Howard, Steve, Noble, anybody else who doesn't have it, get in and get it. Nobody can tell you no. It's only 450 at least for right now. Maybe. Maybe it still is. I don't know. Go get it. And that's right. Just jump in there because you know what? They also just showcased a couple of PSVR 2 games that are coming out and they both look fantastic. And we already know a couple other ones like um, the dark one in here. It's like and radiation. And you're like, oh my God. Oh, it's not Darkstalker. It's the other one. Metro. Exodus. Metro. Metro. Yes. That one's coming. That looks fantastic. So don't worry, folks. It seems doom and gloom, but there's still quite a few really cool games on the horizon. So yes, take advantage of that deal and go get it. And then on top of it, on the horizon is something I I don't I must have forgotten about. I got I don't know how because I remember hearing it and then I remember forgetting it completely. Then I remember hearing it again and then I'm like, whoa, what? What? what, what? It's like a dragon Yakuza is gonna have a live action series hitting Amazon Prime in October. What? Yeah, Eric, it's a six part series, man. This is, well, you excited? I said, well, when the hell did this happen? Yeah. yeah. Well, they said something a while back, and then it went dead. Now, all of a sudden, it's a big thing, and it's right around the corner. What the hell, Matt? Don't ask me, because I never heard about it the first time. This was the first time I've ever heard about it. And I went, I need to know more details stat right now. But I was in the middle of some actual business at actual work. I was in the middle of a meeting, and then stuff went bad, and I completely forgot to even research it and look for it. Like, I know the main actor, has his name was posted, but I don't know who's behind it. I don't know who else is in it. I don't know who's playing Majima, but I'm pumped. Because anything Yakuza, anything like a dragon, you know I'm in. I think a six-part series, like a little you know mini short season, is perfect for it. Because if you did a movie, there's too much, and you can't do all of what Yakuza is in like a two-hour movie. You can do the core story and do a serious Yakuza gangster time, sure, but that's not what Yakuza is. You can do some of the silly stuff and all the serious stuff in like a six-episode series, especially if they're like hour-and-a-half episodes. I don't even know how long they are. I'm assuming an hour. I'm assuming an hour. Yeah. Yeah. But six hours of Yakuza, you can get some crazy characters. You can have Majima doing Majima things instead of just like being the antagonist or like the side character. He can be there. He can do it. You can spend an adequate amount of time with Haruka and Kiryu if that's what the story is. I'm not even, I'm assuming it's just the base story, but it's the perfect amount for that. It's not too little. It's not too much that it wears thin. I'm freaking pumped. I don't know, like I said, who's behind it, who the actors are, what it's going to look like. I haven't even seen if they did a trailer or anything, but you tell me that there's a short mini series for Yakuza. I'm all in. I don't even watch things. Eric knows this. I don't watch TV. I don't watch episodes. I don't watch miniseries. Any of my friends tell me anything, I go, yeah, I'll watch it someday, and some days always never. This I will watch, guaranteed, 100%. I will watch it too. I can't wait. And I don't know much about it either. And I was just going to say, is it going to be prior to Ichiban? Is it going to be like the main story? What I don't know what's going on with it. So I'm excited to find out. I think there is a trailer. Maybe not, but I saw like pictures so if there's pictures, I'd assume there's a trailer somewhere, but maybe not. Maybe they just did like a couple pictures to whet your appetite and get you ready for it. But I'll be there day one as well. I'll be definitely looking forward to seeing how they do it. And I, I think you're right. I think they're going to go, they're going to have some goofiness, but they'll go mild with it and try to get the audience in. And then maybe if this is successful, then maybe the next one, you'll see some more crazy, you know, like a dragon antics, you know what I mean? Hopefully it all works out, and hopefully it's amazing. And then, Matt, we are on the we are literally on the precipice of Summer Games Fest. All right, that's literally the word I was going to use. <laughs> <laughs> We're right there, and depending on when this internet comes back up, you might hear this right before it happens, or this might mean absolutely nothing. Which is why we'll keep it brief <laughs> and just give any like little last minute one. You know, just because we could, we should have properly done this last week, folks. Just a little behind the scenes, but. Yeah, we got carried away with whatever the hell we were talking about last week, and here we are. 
So, Matt, with that all being said, Summer Games Fest is this weekend. All the stuff is happening. Devolver, the main one on the YouTube stage, Xbox's big shindig, uh, indie dev one, Bob, there's a million of them. Any last minute hope, prediction, anything that you're really going into this, hoping to see, wanting to see, predicting to see, anything, what you got? Well, I'll give you some easy ones because Devolver Digital is going to be there. They're having Volvi's 15th anniversary celebration, his birthday party. So you know the show is going to be wacky. It's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. We say that every time the Devolvers does anything, but they always do good stuff. So I'm excited for whatever it is. I have no idea what they would show, but I'm excited for the show. And another gimme, because I think it's been leaked or revealed or teased or whatever, but I don't follow official news sources more stuff for Starfield. I think expansions are rumored to be announced and other DLC things and other ways to enhance the game. I know it just got like the, the 60 FPS update on consoles and some other kind of quality of life stuff, but it's rumored that more stuff for that is happening here or being announced here. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. And I was trying to think because I feel like I'm out of it. I've been in a funk for so long. I don't know what gaming news is or what rumors are or, or what games even come out even from week to week. I have no idea. But the one thing I could think of that I would love to see more of, that I have to see more of, and I, it might be too early to see more of it, it's Metal Gear Solid Delta or whatever that Metal Gear Solid 3 remake is. I got to see more of it. I got to see Snake in action. I got to see character models at least of the other characters. That's my pie in the sky hope. It's like a nice, long, beautiful trailer. Because when they first announced and showed off the original, there was like a three-minute trailer that was just cut like a movie trailer. I want that, but in this new engine. That's what I'm. That's my pie in the sky hopes and dreams. Is it an actual prediction? I don't know. I'm going to predict that it's my pie in the sky hope, though. That's what I'm looking for. I would say keep it a pie in the sky, and maybe at the Xbox. Maybe, but you won't see it at obviously Keeley's because Keeley hates Konami and they have a very poor relationship. So, yeah, true. I don't think we'd see it at that one, but maybe the Xbox one. So, I think it was at a PlayStation one last time, though, wasn't it? I think so. And I could say, oh, a Kojima thing, but that's kind of, hey, look, it's Jeff Keeley. And you know me, I want to see anything from Kojima. So, oh, you'll see Kojima. There's no doubt about it. So, some Death Stranding, too. How about that? My pie in the sky is Metal Gear Solid. My hope slash prediction slash I'm dipping an oar in the water, but not really, is anything Kojima, whether it's his other game, whether it's Death Stranding 2, something. There you go. I was going to say, yeah, you got what? Well, you got OD, you got Death Stranding 2, or you got him just talking about his new Metal Gear light game that he's going to do. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You'll hear from him. It'll be there. That's It's for sure. Now, for me, there's a lot going on. There's already been a bunch of leaks and stuff, so I won't go on about that. And then everybody's, and it, well, it's not even a leak. It was announced, 2K, Take 2, whatever. They said that we got one of your favorite genres is coming. You know, and it's either Bioshock or it's Borderlands. It, it's, you know, it's a gimme. And I'm really hoping that it's Borderlands. I really want to see what they're going to do and what direction they're moving with the Borderlands franchise. So I'm hoping it's that because Bioshock's cool and all. I've never been a huge Bioshock guy myself, so that one doesn't really bring me any joy. I understand a lot of other people would love the hell out of it, but for me, that's what I want. I want to see what Gearbox is doing. Uh, we talked about it in a previous episode how they're just not talking anymore. They're not saying much of nothing. The doors have been closed, so I have no idea what they're up to, and it would be great to see something. I would be a little surprised. I really thought they were going to have... Uh, something off a of left wing coming from Gearbox sooner and later, but mm. if it's you know everyone's favorite, it's a no brainer. It's going to be Borderlands if it's coming from Gearbox. And the reason why I suspect that is because Gearbox themselves is there. Yeah. So why would Gearbox come if it, there's no Gearbox game, you know, being announced? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially since the publishing side is apparently gone or dead. We still never. I don't think we did our homework to make sure that it's. A hundred percent gone, right? Or if there's like a little tiny branch that does remain at Gearbox proper, I don't know. But usually, even then, that wouldn't make sense anyway because they would always say Gearbox Publishing, not Gearbox. Correct. Whenever yeah. they were at an event, this says Gearbox. So therefore, I think that's what it is, and that's what I want to see because I want to know if there's hope, if hope can be put in my heart that Gearbox is going to come back strong with a Borderlands that just gets me in there and I can't let go and I got to play and play and play and play and play. Or whether it's something that ain't up my alley, and I'll still probably play just because I've been with them for so long, but uh, won't be something that I stick to beyond playing through the campaign. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing. 
and hopefully it wows me because I really wanted to. Really, 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 really wanted to. And with that, you know damn well what I'm going to say. It's the same thing I always say, so I'm not going to say it. You know what I'm hoping for. Cap comes there, folks. So just, you know, just cross your fingers. Cross those fingers. You're open for the rival schools, right? It's rival schools. That's what you want. You want that to come back? <laughs> Don't you make me to... say it. I said I wouldn't, but if you push me, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> All right. I won't say that you want Darkstalkers to come back. It's fine. I, I didn't say that, so you can't say the other thing. <laughs> All right. Fine. All right. But that's what I'm looking forward to. I hope they surprise me with that. Uh, and other than that, like you said, Devolver is going to be great. I want to see what Xbox has up its sleeve. What are they working on? Mm-hmm. I would say EA, EA's there, and I would be like, oh, man, they're going to make Dead Space 2, but we already know that's not happening. So, unfortunately, I don't really care what EA is doing because Wild Hearts just shut down, and that's another one I really liked. So, eh, they're not really doing anything for me. So I'm kind of I'm kind of just in this one watching and having a good time, man. That's what I'm doing, except for uh, the Gearbox front. And that's fine by me, honestly, because that means I can just go in and have a good time and not really be upset or mad about anything because eh, I don't really have any expectations. I've got so many games already lined up for me that, honestly, I can go a whole year without anything I care about coming. So it's a good spot to be in for me. I get to just have a good time watching a whole bunch of video games get announced and everybody celebrate and have a good time. So I'm happy. I'm a happy man. Yeah, 100% agree. I don't know any real leaks, and I don't have any expectations. You know, I'm not going to be that guy who goes, man, maybe Hollow Knight Silk Song is here, so I'll be disappointed when it's not. I'm just looking forward to seeing awesome game trailers. And, oh, wait, what? Speak, <laughs> speaking of game trailers, bing bong, hey, bing bong. We got a bing bong, we got a mailbag question from a buddy knowable, and it's right on time. It's right in time. It's right here. We can't do it any other time because he even references. He writes, <clears throat> before we get into another summer of game trailers, so hopefully the internet comes up and I can post this before the summer of game trailers officially starts, what are your favorite game trailers of all time? Some of my favorites are the heavy music trailers, like the Gears of War Mad World trailer, the Dead Island trailers, and some classic Borderlands 1 trailers. He even links to his all-time favorite from a game called Strafe, which is set to an atonal kind of sad, melodic version of Smash Mouth's All-Star, which is great. I'll even put the link in the show notes so you can check that one out. What do you got, Eric, on this one? Favorite game trailers of all time? I got two. How many you got? Oh, man. Well, let me give you one. I got a couple, too. First off, I got to tell you, Noble, what good taste, because that Gears of War, the original OG Gears of War Mad World trailer, got me. I mean, it was a hook, line, sinker. I was sold... Gears of War was going to be played no matter what happened in this world. What a great trailer that was. So I found others and thought of others that I appreciated, so I won't steal that one, but i got to give you kudos because that was amazing. One more recent one was the Borderlands 3 Mask of Mayhem teaser trailer. When that hit, oh, I watched it at least 70 times. That trailer... That that beat going on, while it's going around the statues, and you got all the characters playing out in different scenes, and then of course the main antagonist, protagonist, all up in there doing stuff. The 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 Easter eggs that were in it, that was such a fantastic trailer, and it holds a special place in my heart because when we when that hit, like. Oh, the vibes were there. It was like, okay, man, we're we're getting meat and potatoes. The show is going to be rocking. We're about to be playing this new game. They're going to be revealing all sorts of stuff for it. So it was twofold. First off, the trailer itself was just hype, was amazing. But it also just t- took what we had going right at that time in the show and it just went, bam, here you go. Eat good, boys. It was It was wonderful. Hell yeah. I can't agree more with that one. For my two, though... I'm going all the way back to the Xbox 360 era. And there's one that's like so tied to a piece of music that whenever I hear the piece of music, I see this trailer in my mind's eye. That's the second one I'm going to talk about. But the first one is, for a series I've never been that much into. And I feel like maybe this one struck a chord with me because I think these two trailers specifically, I used to see on TV a lot. And it was kind of that first era of like, whoa, this is like a video game trailer on TV. And the trailer's are bumping and awesome and popping. So for me, the first one is the Halo 3 ODST trailer. And like I said, I've never been a big Halo guy. I never have even played Halo 3 ODST. And I'm not a military guy either, but this is the one where, you know, you're at like a military funeral. The drill sergeant or whoever's in charge takes the flag off the casket, folds it up, hands it to this young guy. 
and then you follow him through his boot camp days, and then he starts learning to be an ODST, a drop pod trooper, and you see him drop into battle, and the giant elite smashes him, and then it cuts. You know, they've buried some guy out on the field, and you know they hear the action going on in the distance, and the captain of the unit's like, let's go, and he pulls on his ODST hat, and it just... Phew. The graphics are great. They still hold up to this day. I don't care what anybody says. I watch that trailer, and I get pumped. I'm not a military guy. I'm not an ODST guy. I'm not a Halo guy, but that trailer is flipping awesome. I watched it again because Noble's mailbag question here, it still holds up. It still hits. I love it. That's a great one. That is a great one. As soon as you started saying that, I went, oh, damn, that was good. That got me so stoked for ODST, which in that time I was already stoked for because the idea of just not being Master Chief to me was awesome. I went, oh, this is this going to be the shizness for sure. So, yeah, I'm in the same boat. What a good one you picked there. One easy one for me. You should already know what I'm going to say. It's Dead Space's original Twinkle Twinkle Little Star trailer. That trailer was just like so perfectly disturbing and weird and just put you right into the mood that you needed to be for Dead Space. While it's singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you're getting these snippets and then that weird jarring like as something went wrong and then just it was and then the ch- the song itself like changes. Oh, it was wonderful. What a good trailer that was. That got me so excited for that game. And, of course, that was like, I'm trying to remember. It came, it was like a little dry spout for Silent Hills at the time. And it was it was like a bad one had come out. And I was hoping for something that was, like, scary again. And I just, nothing was itching. Nothing was doing what it needed to do. And then when that hit, I went, damn, there's hope again. We're going to play an eerie, scary game again. I was so happy about it. I love that game. I love that trailer. What a time to be alive. And speaking of the time to be alive, I teased it earlier. It's the Lost Odyssey trailer that's set to Jefferson Airplane's White Rabbit. And like I said, I watched this when Noble brought up the mailbag question, and I went, does this still hold up? I got chills to this day. There's a comment from me on the trailer on YouTube from two years ago saying it still gives me chills to this day, and it still does right now as we're recording this. The other day... To get myself pumped for talking about this trailer, I put on White Rabbit on Apple Music, and it just, God, it just gives me chills all over again. If anybody doesn't know Lost Odyssey, it was the Xbox 360 exclusive made by Sakaguchi when he spun off into Mistwalker Studios. And this is kind of, like you said, the kind of the same time when, for you, survival horror was kind of dipping, and Dead Space went, bam, look at this. Final Fantasy was kind of dipping for me at this time. Because this was after 12, which I had never played, and like before 13, which was a very big disappointment for me, but it was in that lull in between. And, you know, 10 I kind of liked, but not really. And then this came out, and I went, man, this looks beautiful. Again, the CG for this still holds up from Xbox 360 days. And the song itself, it starts fairly quiet, and it swells up, and it gets big, and so does the trailer. Like when the music swells and the action starts popping in the trailer... And I'll never forget, this part shown in the trailer is like in the first five minutes of gameplay. It's like the big cutscene at the beginning. But the way the music is swelling and Kaim is fighting desperately in this giant battle. And he blocks somebody's sword and then someone comes at his neck from the other side and he does this like slow head rah, dodge. The music, the visuals, everything. This trailer is f***ing awesome. If you haven't seen it, if you've forgotten it, go check it out. Watch it. Put your headphones on. Turn the music up. Oh, my God. It's great. It's my favorite trailer probably ever. It gives me chills every time. Watching it, listening to just the music, I see the moments from the trailer in my head when I listen to the music. And I know the song's been around since the 70s or whatever. No, this is what the song is about. It's about this game. It's about this trailer. That sounds like a good one. I've never seen that one, admittedly, and I never did play that particular title. So, man, I'm missing out. I feel like I'm missing out, man. I missed missed it, and I'm sad about that. Now, this last one is a game we almost missed. Well, it's the last one for me anyway. I got more, but I'll stop it here at this one. It's a game we almost missed. It's Battleborn. Remember that very first trailer? It's got uh, What's-Her-Face, the bow girl, running. I don't even remember her name anymore. It's all fading away. <laughs> Thorn. She's running, and there's like the little bug, and then the arrow's flying down, and she saves it, and then she goes prancing up, and there's these explosions happening, and she's being chased. And you're like, what the hell is this? Then she gets hit, and all of a sudden the robot man, he comes down, helps her up. And you're like, this still isn't making no sense. And then you see Oscar Mike, you know, 
chasing her down, and then all the uh, little robots are with him. Like that trailer was so it was so cool and well put together, but so weird. It made no sense. I didn't really understand what the hell the game was about or what was going on, but I was so excited because I went, "This is from Gearbox." Because of course, the first thing it says is the makers of Borderlands, and I went, "Oh my god." What the hell are they doing? What, what, what is this? And they gave you that. They just gave you this tiny thing. And it, it accumulates with everybody on the field. And this core group, is Melka? No, not Melka's the other girl, spiky hair girl. What's her damn name, man? Well, well, Thorn is the one you're talking about, but Phoebe's Thorn, in this trailer, yes. too. I'm, I'm watching the trailer right now. Phoebe's in it. So you've seen your yeah, girl Phoebe's from the in very it. beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. she's spinning around up there helping out, and then Wrath jumps in. And every, you get to see quite a few of them all together. And the core group's fighting off the other group, and they're kind of encroaching in on them and just pinning them down in this middle area. And it pans out, and you're in, like, this big, big war-looking thing going on. And it was just really cool. And the music itself was just fit perfectly with it to give you that ethereal weird kind of vibe but it was just it was an exciting time because i didn't know what this game was going to be what it was all about and then when we got invited later on and this ain't part of the trailer but we got into some alpha or whatever it was like super meta mega beta Mm -hmm. and it was bad like you know the everything was too many baddies were out on the screen at once it was clipping and doing all and me and matt were like i don't know brother we don't think this is for us and then the comeback from that obviously it's just a wild time and a wild trailer that really just set it all off in the first place. So definitely Battleborn, a good one. God, I don't remember this trailer at all. But like I said, I've been watching it while you've been talking about it. This has like all the elements of that Lost Odyssey trailer because it starts pretty quiet because it's chill with the bug and her. And then it just keeps ramping up and up and up. And obviously watching it with hindsight, with remembrances of all these characters, it like hits emotionally a lot more because I remember all those good times and all the all the fun we had with it. God, that's a good one, dude. I, I Like I said, I've never seen this before. I guarantee I've never seen this trailer before, except, you know, maybe ages ago at some E3 that's been <laughs> forgotten. But holy cow, that's a good one. Now, as long as I can find them, and I pulled up the other ones you were talking about, as long as I can find them, I'm putting them all in the show notes. So everybody has no excuses. You got to go watch some of these awesome trailers. Noble has dropped some of his awesome trailers. The one that he linked is in the show notes too. Anybody who's listening, anybody in the Discord, anybody on Patreon, anybody, anybody anywhere, drop some of your favorites. Also in replies on the Twitter, on the Facebook, anywhere you can. And we can't close out the show without the very best segment in the world because it's named after me. It's Uncle Matt's Trivia Corner. And I did get some feedback. People have asked me to repeat the question from the last one when I give the answer. So here we go. The last question was... By what name was the classic video game Another World Known in North America? The answer is Out of This World. It's a flashback type of game. If you see the graphics for that, you'll recognize it's flashbacky. But this week's question, the last question for the intro set of cards here. The design of the iconic creeper from Minecraft was the result of a failed attempt to create which other Minecraft creature? I will tell you, I'll give you a hint. It's an animal. That's not much of a hint, but it's it's something. Uh, it was probably the carp. Sorry, it was the Damn it. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how it is. But if you know how it is, and if you know the answer to this question, or if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you have any feedback at all, if you want to tell us more cool video game trailers to watch from the retro days, from the nowadays days, send that to us via the email, thirdshiftme at gmail.com, on the Twitter machine at thirdshiftme. Find us on Facebook on Third Shift. Hit up the Discord, the Patreon. Hit up my house. Hit up the Twitch stream. Hit me up at work. Don't come to my house. Come to work and distract me from all the fun stuff that's going on there. And I'm like, hey, brother, who are you? What's going on? And you'll say, I have the answer to that trivia question. Here it is. And I'll say, prove you didn't cheat. And you'll be able to because you're a good person. And we'll have a handshake and a high five. We will have a handshake and a high five. And guess what? The show got even weirder because my Bluetooth uh, headphones died. So I'm literally holding this phone up to my head like a, like a person talking <laughs> on a phone again while I'm speaking into the mic and staring at this blank screen of my monitor it's a (laughs) strange time but you know what strange times are fun i like them you like them why don't you have yourself a strange time and instead of being a greedy son of a gun and keeping all that money in your little pocket go give it to us over on patreon like a little tip go i want to give my money because i want a strange feeling a feeling that isn't me just taking and keeping my hard-earned money and give it to us boop right over there on patreon why don't you go do that? Have yourself a strange time, too. But <laughs> if you say it's not happening, Eric, I'm not giving you a strange time. I don't want a strange time. You can go do some other cool stuff that I promise won't be strange. 
like mailbag questions. Not strange at all. Noble just did one. He doesn't feel any stranger for it, and you won't either. So why don't you go over there, throw us some questions, topics you want us to talk about, all that fun stuff, or head on over to Twitch, throw us a freaking Prime sub, boop, boop, boop. That's not going to make you feel strange. It's not your money. It's Prime's money. In fact, it should probably make you feel really good in your tummy because you're taking a corporation's money and giving it to the little man. So you're doing a good thing like Robin Hood. You can do all those wonderful things for us, and we'd appreciate it so very much. Absolutely, we would, and we'll also appreciate you listening to that very next episode, which will be dropping on or around, before or after, who who knows, who knows what's happening, on or around the 13th of June, and you can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube, and as I always say, hey, if you like what we're doing, you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out, and we really do appreciate it. We really do appreciate it. Just like we appreciate those five-star reviews. This is the time, folks. It's Summer Games Fest weekend. You're all out there. The sun's beating on your head. You're eating, slurping popsicles, having a freaking blast. Give us that five-star rating, and I promise you that popsicle, instead of tasting like grape, it'll taste like grape. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I'm saying it. I know what you're saying, but until that time when you have that delicious popsicle right in your mouth and melting and dripping on your dirty white tea, there's nothing else to say but... Don't forget to say... Shut up and sit down.